to all of you. Uh, thank you for coming on board uh, this session. Uh, we call it uh, 60 Minutes with Someone. So today we have Professor Emeritus Professor Dr. Tan Chong Tin. Uh, Prof, you have to bear with me. The introduction is going to take some time. And I think this is important. Uh, I have known Professor Tan for 40 or years. Until I prepared for this time, I didn't know that much about him. So this session is a Christian meeting, uh, basically focused on people who have been serving God in various areas, especially in the marketplace. Marketplace means the working place. And if you see on this poster, he's an emeritus professor since 2019. That means he can use the title professor for the rest of his life. And he has won multiple national and international awards. We'll come to that. He's an author, a writer. He's an editor of a ASEAN Neurological, uh, Asian Journal of Neurology or Neurology Asia. And it's a very tough job and has been an editor since the beginning of the journal. Uh, he's also a scientist and a researcher. We'll hear about his amazing, with his team, Prof Lam and Dr. Chua, their discovery and containment of the Nipah virus that some of you may remember. And since then, he has been consultant for WHO and UN to Bangladesh and wherever there is need regarding the Nipah virus. Of course, he's a medical doctor, and I said earlier, he's a teacher first and educator. Also a community, community leader, and we hear some of it of his influence and his work in the Chinese community. So he is also doing social work and advisor to many uh, 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 organizations. And he's also chairman of the Malaysian Bible Seminary. We'll come to find out how a man can wear so many hats, and I'm sure it's, all this is possible because there's a pillar behind every man, uh, his dear Datin Irene. Okay, um, we will come to some of the awards uh, shortly, but some of the awards are very special. For example, the Merdeka Award and the Mahathi Science Award. These are for excellence, you know, and that's what uh, we have. Uh, I'm not sure why uh, our Dr. Tin. Okay. Prof Tan, um, welcome again. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I see you as a friend, a very humble, uh, humble person. Just amazing. You, you, you're just a simple person. You're just another man next door. But your 40 years, what you have done, I think is a shining example for us. And I think before you came on, I mentioned that, you know, as a Christian, we, we try to be humble and we don't think of ourselves. We think of ourselves as a servant before Almighty. But yet God looks for servants that he can use. He can't use everyone. So I want to start off by hearing your story, how you came to know the Lord Jesus uh, from your Christian home, your family, but at what point it really hit you that indeed we are servant of the Most High. I, as you mentioned, my faith come from my mother. Uh, my mother was uh, illiterate, and uh, during the Japanese war, she became a Christian. And after that, she brought the whole family, 11 of us uh, children, to go to church and so on. So in a way, I inherited the faith from my mother, uh, who is a very God-fearing woman. But... Uh, my challenge in the faith is uh, how to keep my faith. Uh, I went to Chinese school. I went to Zhongling. And during that time, in the 1960s, uh, there were a lot of anti-Christian, uh, you know, anti-Christian sort of uh, intellectual atmosphere during that time. And it was a long story. I think that was... Uh, uh, you know, in the 1919, the May the 4th movement in China, uh, it was started in, in uh, after the First World War, when the, you know, the, 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 the Versailles Treaty awarded Shantung to Japan. 
So that was uh, by the, you know, the Western countries, the main Western countries. And in China, it started a very anti-West feeling because of that. And Communist Party uh, was formed in 1921. And uh, among the intellectuals in China, uh, it, you know, it, they view as a result Christian faith as an imperialist tool. And so that was uh, some of my teachers who were left-leaning. And uh, even in, when they are not left-leaning, they were rather anti-Christian as a result. I remember when I was uh, uh, writing an essay in Junior Middle Tree, and I wrote that I was, uh, I mentioned that I was a Christian and the teacher wrote in my essay that how can you do that in this day and age, you know? So my challenge was how to keep my faith and how to make my faith real and meaningful and not just a cultural uh, identity for me. So back to your mom uh, of interest. Uh, did she hear from John Sung or Watchman Nee? I'm always excited to hear people who actually sat under the teaching of John Sung or Watchman Nee. Well, uh, John Sung, I think, came to Malaya in the 30s and 40s. La. Uh, that was uh, a bit, uh, I don't think she had a personal contact with John Sung. I may be wrong, I can ask, but it was mainly the, you know, the, 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 the women who were midwives and so on from the church, what they call Gu Niang at that time, mm. who, who, who was speaking to her. And she's actually a very intelligent woman, my, my mother, although she, she doesn't know how to read and write, never get educated. And what impressed her was that, you know, they say this is the greatest God and uh, we are trying to, we are worshipping. And then she said that, oh, woman, you pai ti gong. Ah. I mean, and ti gong is the greatest God. Now you're introducing to me the greatest God so, uh, you know, I, I accept that. And, and so that was how she walked in the path of faith. La. Wonderful. And remind me, how many children, eh? how many siblings do you have? Well, I'm I know some eight, of them. Uh, eight of 11 siblings. So uh, all of them came to the faith. All yes, of them. yes, they all came to the so faith. So mothers and fathers out there, it's our job to share <laughs> the love of the Lord, so that our kids will come to know His faith. I, I think that's very special, uh, what our mother says. So we as parents have that big role. Yeah, but were there any special teachers or mentors in your spiritual life, people who, you know, would have touched you, somebody? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, in different fields, I remember when I was in the high school, I invited a lecturer who is a a mathematics, a brilliant mathematics lecturer in Nanyang University to come to Penang to, to talk to our students. Uh, that was a Christian group. And I think uh, uh, subconsciously, I must have told myself, I want to be like him. And C.S. Lewis doesn't know me, but I think he would be one of my mentors uh, because he taught me what Christian faith means and what are the core values. Uh, I don't know whether you know Dr. Tan Kim Sai or not. He was a second, a third principal of MBS. And he taught me how to have a balanced view of engaging the society at large. Uh, Anand Jung, uh, Yang Muku, and uh, I met him before. I think he taught me how to live a life that incorporates the sickness and death. Uh, Anand Jung passed away already. And my father passed away when I was 13 years old. My elder sister and my elder brother, Chong Guan, they both helped to nurture me. 
both spiritually as well as it in a physical sense. Uh, I suppose, mm. yes, yes. There's an emphasis to us again, how much that we can influence each other or at least impart, you know, that uh, as a teacher to your student, earlier was parent to us, now teacher, uh, boss, even to a sibling. There's so much we can do through our life. Lah. And I, I'm sure all this had uh, planted seeds into your life. Lah. Okay. Um, yeah, I know we're going on further, but maybe you'll touch a bit about your Datin. Lah. She's very shy in some corners. She has a ministry of her own. And one, one time we'll, sh- we'll bring the ladies out. I think certainly I'll invite her. Yeah. But a few words about the pillar of the family. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Irene, uh, my wife, she's a wonderful woman. Actually, she's a very warm and very charismatic person, much more than me. That's okay. So uh, I think as a person, she's much easier to, to get to know and much nicer to get to know than me. She actually is very gifted. She's a great teacher and a, and, and a great leader. She's from Binturu, Sarawak. And we knew each other in OCF, the OC Christian Fellowship in Melbourne. And uh, it was one of the happiest days of my my life uh, when she went back for holiday and I wrote to her and she replied me, uh, indicating that she could accept me as a friend and possibly a boyfriend. Uh, Wonderful. Well, I'm enormously blessed to have her as my life partner uh, she Amazing. brought so much happiness to myself and my family wonderful wonderful uh, actually i wanted both of you side by side but i think it's better she's in another room um she's fu chao in your hokkien isn't it yeah i'm actually <laughs> long yen she's a fu chao yes so uh, how, how do you communicate at home is it english oh, or mandarin Oh, Mandarin wonderful. And <laughs> Mandarin and English. You do speak some Fu Chao, sir, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I understand Fu Chao. Okay, related to this, you know, uh, you're wearing so many hats and doing so many things and she has her own thing. You know, um, tell us the, the, the positive points, how you work together on this and some of the issues. Like, you know, we, we know couples, there are many couples here. How we work it out, you know? Uh, well, she we said... Not know it, we don't need to know everything, but at least, you know, <laughs> some areas to give us some points how you survive, you know? Uh, well, there always will be some differences of opinion and, and some conflicts, but she's really a great help for me. Uh, you know, she's a very spiritual person and very warm person and a very personable person and very compassionate person. So really there are many things that are missing in my life. Uh, I'm a much more, uh, you know, I'm much harder person. Uh. So she, she actually bring a lot of happiness uh, to, to me. Uh. Wonderful. Okay, we move on. Uh. Yeah. And one of the things in us is, you know, uh, when we become a Christian, as you referred to earlier, we want to share the gospel and so on. But, you know, over the years, I see that you radiate faith, uh, like St. Francis Azizi says, you know, uh, preach the gospel all the time, but when necessary, speak. So we see this in you to be able to just bring Christ, uh, bring the love of Christ, uh, the love of Christ, so that people are not threatened. I mean, you mentioned that there were times when they say, why, why, you know? So I just wonder how you get into this world, being in the world, not of the world, but yet being accepted by the world. Well, uh, you know, uh, really, I believe we should serve. Uh, I, I mentioned about C.S. Lewis, and uh, he taught me what is the meaning of love. And I think we should serve the world, uh, serve the people in need. And that is the essence of what love is. Uh, uh, you know, and I, and, and I have no problem uh, uh, mixing with the, the world at large because I think uh, things are not black and white. 
uh, often there's a lot of gray. There are a lot of things very wonderful about our traditional uh, values and so on. I, I think I can see the positive values in, in all the things that I see, la, all the people that I mix with. Uh, so, you know, this is, uh, this is what, uh, it's not difficult for me to mix around. Uh, about the faith, I, you know, I, people do ask me what is, a, what is this that gives meaning to your life? What is it that drives you? In fact, I wrote a book uh, on, the, on this uh, called Fu So Gan Wei Lu Zi Niu. Loosely translated, it is making sense of life, a life to serve. And I wrote it mainly for three groups of people. Firstly, are uh, those patients who come and see me and I, for, for various physical symptoms. But I, I realized that their problem is mainly uh, to do is spiritual because uh, they haven't grasped what, what, what they strive at. Uh, perhaps they should, they should learn uh, what is really important. And the second group of people who are depressed, I was hoping that uh, having a meaning goal in life may help them. And the third group are those related to hospice ministry. I think we should run our lives based on the perspective that life is difficult, the certainty of death and life is beyond our control. Uh, you know, and all these, of course, uh, God as a giver of life and and our our uh, and our guide and our Lord. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm trying to say that the goodness of God is not just being our helper in time of, of distress, but He can be the Lord of our life that we can confidently follow. Thank you, Professor. No? Uh, if you could move back a bit, then we can see more of you. The audience can see you move back. Uh, wonderful. You know, Professor, you have actually mentioned two key words. You, know? you talk about love and servanthood or sacrifice. And, and I think that's one thing that, you know, uh, teachers, uh, people who are in the community, I think this is the thing we got to emphasize, service, 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 and loving. Then only our, our, our lives can shine. That means walk the talk, you know. You know, you have done a lot for the Chinese community, really a lot. And many of us do not know about it. Um, this thing about the, you know, the Malaysian, uh, a Chinese, uh, let me get the term right. The involvement of the Malaysian Chinese uh, society uh, in uh, Slangor, assembly, the work there. Maybe you want to highlight a bit of your contribution there? Well, I, uh, you know, I believe that as Christians, we should be involved with the Chinese society. And so that is how, and being an academic, I thought the Center for Malaysian Chinese Studies, uh, I chose to be involved. Uh, uh, Center for Malaysian Chinese Studies uh, uh, was started in the 1980s uh, because of the uh, problem of, or I call it a problem after the NEP, where the Chinese uh, society felt the need for a resource and research organization to support their suqiu, their appeal to the government. So I became I was a leader there. I was a chairman and, and, and various uh, key leaders for about 20 years. Uh, I think the, my main contributions are mainly to set the direction of the organization uh, to become a, a research center uh, rather than a social action, action group. Now. And uh, I also did uh, uh, try to help them in terms of getting the, the English educated doctors to speak to the Chinese public because I realized that uh, the Chinese public may not uh, be so familiar with the medical things. Uh, 
and I wrote a few books uh, related to that. And then uh, to, I also introduced an interreligious dialogue where I get uh, uh, the Christian uh, leaders as well as the Buddhist leaders and, and so on to... Uh, to, to I'm uh, flashing it now. Yeah. Uh, the Stephen yeah. Tong meeting with Kim Beng. I think that's, yes. that's yes. quite fantastic. Yes. And the end result I heard was at least an understanding, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and, and, and yeah. I think there was a lot, uh, some of the more fiery sort of uh, uh, Buddhist monk, they begin to tone down about, yeah. about Christian faith. Uh. We remember when the Lord Jesus came also, he was very open to dialogue and questions. And in fact, some of these tricky questions that the Pharisees, Sadducees asked him, had led to our doctrinal faith. It's quite amazing. Of course, he, he was quite, being, being the authority, he could tell off some of the, the not so sincere religious people. So, but that's amazing that what you have done. Yeah, we, many of us know Reverend Stephen Tong. Um, I thought that was a very special uh, area that you got involved with. And your books, you know, I know you got so many books written. I don't know where to start also. But um, what was the purpose of your book? Now, when, as an author, you were reaching out to the Chinese community. Uh, was, it, was it interfaith issues? Or? Yeah, I wrote a number of books uh, mainly to, uh, to speak to the Chinese society as a doctor. Uh, you know, uh, epilepsy is one of the books that I wrote. Uh, and then I wrote another book called uh, Mental, uh, the, the Mental yeah. Illness it, and yeah. Possession. It's on that's the screen now. It's on the screen now. Uh, that's a, in the middle. Where I, because uh, I realized that 80% of those who come to us as, uh, who have some uh, abnormal thinking, uh, sooner or later, somebody will say that they are being possessed. So I try to, uh, uh, is, that's a per reason why I wrote this book. In fact, it's quite interesting. Uh, you know, I, I write this and try to argue why this is a physical illness and how to integrate the, you know, religion and the, and the mental illness. And there was a big uh, Temple in 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 uh, uh, along the Selangor coast that actually invited me to speak on this topic, and you know, and and I I took the challenge and went there to speak. I told him, you know, uh, you know what I say may not fit into your temple. That uh, you know, a lot of the temple along the Selangor coast they do. Uh, media, uh, I mean medium, they have medium and so on. But anyway, I, I, he, since he invited me, so I went along, you know, and spoke uh, about this. Uh. Coming back to your work as a teacher educator, you have done so much for the ASEAN region. I, I actually recognize you as the father of uh, neurology training in ASEAN. And you have a heart, not just for Malaysia, but to, for those countries like Cambodia, we've got Cambodia here, and uh, Laos and Thailand, you know, it's quite amazing. You want to share some challenges? I think you've gone around the region to teach on epilepsy also. Do you want to share some insights on that? Yes, I think uh, uh, maybe, uh, I think it's partly Christian. I think it is, uh, I do believe that we, our concern, you know, national border is a very arbitrary thing. And we should go beyond our national border to go and reach out to people around us. Uh, so, for example, you know, the, the Burma, uh, you know, they have uh, close to 60 million people. And I have been there many times. And they were, you know, about 10 neurologists, you know, and 60 million people, the, 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 the Thailand have a thousand neurologists and Indonesia have 2000 neurologists. And, and, you know, Thailand, the population is not that different from, from Myanmar. And when many years ago, when I asked Australian, why don't you come with me to, to, to Burma? 
They say, no, 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 that's under military rules. I said, what has that to do with uh, military rules, you know? So we have taken, I've been there many times, we have taken many uh, Burmese uh, 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 neurologists for training in our center. I try to arrange funding for them. And I would say that today, 80% of the Burmese uh, neurologists have uh, undergone some, some training in uh, UMMC. I'm, I'm yes. glad that we can be uh, play a role in their, in their national neurology development. In fact, for your work, uh, the International League Against Epilepsy have appointed you as an ambassador of, lep- of epilepsy. So it's amazing. Professor Tan, you're an ambassador for epilepsy. Thank you. I think a very, <laughs> very high and honorable position. Yeah. And um, you have also been involved with so much research and all that. Can you share a bit on the NEPA story? Uh, remind them, I think people at Malaysia, as I always say, we are hangat hangat tai ayam. We forget really what we went through the disastrous time with the NEPA. I remember I was on the other side, you and your team, Prof Lam, Dr. Chua. Just share yeah, 1999 was uh, 1998 actually NIPA started in Ipoh and in 1999 it spread to Seremban, to Negeri Sembilan and then they, the patients start to appear on our doorstep in, uh, in the university hospital and uh, many come and then soon they die. So it was a terrible thing. And uh, at that time, the Ministry of Health was of the view that this is a uh, Japanese encephalitis because it mainly involved uh, the, the pig farmers. Uh, but after seeing a few of the patients, I realized that this is really not Japanese encephalitis. Uh, it's an illness that's related to, to, uh, to, to pig farming because a lot of patients are pig farmers. And, uh, and the reasoning is actually very simple. You see, Bukit Palando and uh, Sungai Nipa, this is mostly the 100 patients that we look after. Uh, you know, uh, these are the main villages that they come from. There are 10,000 people. And uh, uh, 6,000 of them were Chinese. 1,000 were Indian and 3,000 were Malays. And all the patients, or nearly all the patients, were Chinese. Surely the mosquito would not know who is a Chinese and who is an Indian and who is a Malay. They would have no discrimination and bite anybody. So it is not a mosquito-related disease, despite the fact that uh, our, our lab were reporting some PCR for JE were positive. So I argue very strongly against uh, JE, Japanese and supply this. And there was a river that divide uh, uh, Bukit Plando from Sungai Pile. So I call up my friends in Sungai Pile and uh, asking them how wide the river is. And they told me it's about 20, 30 meters. And that would be, the mosquito can fly across easily with this uh, river. So we, we felt that it is uh, 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 another disease related to the pig. And, uh, and Prof Chua was a, was a great uh, virologist and do all the lab work, but after that, uh, after the discovery, you know, we are clinicians, we need to, because a new disease and doctors think by pattern recognition. So we need to tell them to characterize the illness so that they can recognize the illness and uh, characterize the disease. And we also need to work out the treatment. So I, 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 you know, I sort of, uh, I initiated what sort of drug we should use so that we can, enough of the people will take the drug uh, and then so that we can analyze later on and the pathogenesis. Uh, and we had a great help from our pathologist, uh, Prof Wong uh, on that. So that was our work on NIPA. 
Well, the amazing thing is that in within four months, you identified the cause of the illness and the virus. I mean, it took four years for HIV to be recognized. In COVID-19 till now, we don't know where it come from, although we have all sorts of theories. But within four months, you identified it and was able to contain it. I think that was really an amazing work. Uh, for that, I think you are internationally recognized. We want to move on to the Malaysian Bible Seminary, where you have been chairman from 1984. So I just want to hear from you. What are the challenges now? Are there, why are people not going to Bible school? I mean, there is always that mindset that if you want to be a pastor, only go to Bible school. The second mindset is you go into Bible school, many come out confused. And I mean, something is not right there. Is it the marketing or is it the curriculum or what? We have a chairman, Tyrannus chairman here who might, might chip in, but what do you think? What is the problem? Everybody should be studying the Bible. Why only a small percentage? All that Martin Luther did is not being used. Why? I mean, well, all the Muslims read the Quran, the, the Punjabis read their, their Holy Grail. Why, why are Christians not reading the Bible? Only 10%. We can't blame it on the chairman nah, because you're a chairman. <laughs> I was uh, make a chairman for 30 plus years. Uh, I think mainly because uh, I was bilingual and being having an academic background, they thought may be helpful for the, for the seminary. So that was, uh, and, and it was a long process trying to bring it up. Now they have what, uh, uh, five, six hundred program students uh, from all over the world. And, and it has a very big campus uh, in near Rawang area. So it has become a much more mature uh, seminary. I, I took up the challenge because I realized it is a privilege to serve in a seminary and seminary play a very extremely important role in the life of the church. Uh, not only in Malaysia, but, but in the region. The issues that you raise is important. So we need to have a balance between uh, uh, you know, the, the academic part uh, to build up the foundation of the, our Christian workers, uh, as well as teaching the lay leaders, uh, as well as the spiritual aspect that they, they, they are nurtured spiritually rather than the seminary being purely an intellectual place. I think the, it is important for seminary to also, you know, theology is, uh, is, is, arises out of the problem in the church and in the society. You look at how the theology developed, uh, usually because of certain a certain crisis like in, you know, uh, like you look at Martin Luther, you look at the early church. So what the point I'm trying to make is that uh, theology must, uh, it, there is a place of practical theology to emphasize on practical theology, uh, uh, how the theology is applied to the daily life. And so in MBS, we now not only run courses, the uh, classic courses, but also for the social worker to help them to, to get engaged to the society in terms of social work. We have family ministry, uh, running degrees on family ministry. Uh, so, you know, so I, uh, all these uh, is trying to uh, uh, sort of specialize courses to impart certain skills as well as a basic doctrine the traditional doctrine and how to how to uh, interpret the bible so that they can preach uh, based on the bible all these yeah. are important I, I would suggest that all the seminary schools get together and maybe even with the catholic and, and come to some kind of uh, marketing strategy and get everyone who believes to go through some program yeah. 
I think Christian I think, education is extremely important for the church. We'll hear from Brother Tan Tek Singh on another day. Eh? Brother Tek Singh, you don't mind eh? another day. So anyway, it's really amazing um, your community work also. You're going to touch on the faith, hope and life community work. I, I, I'm quite encouraged that, you know, when feeding the poor, there's so many groups feeding the poor. So I think Malaysians as a whole are quite generous lah, as a heart. Can you want to share about the disabled and the sick and the help that they need in society, which is going to be a big thing in the future? Well, I, you know... You are the chairman uh, of this group. You want to share a bit of that? Yeah, I, you know, I have, uh, for many years, I have felt that the, the Christians, we may not know how to help our brother and sisters and they face the last journey of their life. So, so you know, that was from my personal experience with some pastors, uh, you know, when their family members face the last journey of their lives and some, from some Christian leaders, uh, the, the difficulties that they face. So I felt that there is a need for the church <clears throat> to have to, to, to directly involve with the hospice service. Uh, the other motivation is that I feel that a lot of Christians, uh, they, they are rather, you know, dualistic. You know, they, 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 on the one hand, they are, they are, they, they are keen on Sundays uh, to go to church and so on. On the other hand, the life that they live, uh, the values that they have, it's actually not much different from what you see in the society. So I thought that, you know, if the church uh, could be more directly involved with the caring for the death, so that may be transmitted not only to impart the, the caring skill, but also to take death as, a, a, you know, as a part of life. And, and change their life value. That is a reason why I was uh, keen and uh, thank God that uh, after the, uh, the 2018 election, our application to the Registrar of Society got approved. Immediate, uh, a few days after the, the, the new government took over, they approved this uh, FHL, uh, although we spell it out that this is a, a, a uh, hospice care that is, uh, you know, to be a member, you must be a Christian, you know. Although we, we, we say that uh, we serve uh, uh, irrespective of race, irrespective of nation. And so my church, I am a, from a very small church. My church is only about 70, 80 people. We actually spend 1.5 million to buy a bungalow to house this, uh, this FHL, you know, this uh, hospice center uh, where our nurses and now we recruited uh, occupation therapists uh, to, to serve the people uh, in, in, in uh, Klang Valley. Uh, hopefully this will be, you know, make an impact long term. <laughs> They've grown a lot since uh, beginning since the ministry started in 2018. Yeah, I was about to ask you about your position as an elder in the church. Uh, I, I only served as a deacon for one year and I could feel the weight on my shoulders, very, very heavy. But you have been an elder for so many years. And well, what, what a... gives you the tenacity? <laughs> well, I... You know, this is Chinese church. When we when we came back uh, from UK, we felt that we should join a Chinese church. Uh, the reason is because the needs are greater in the Chinese church. Uh, uh, you know, we uh, so, <laughs> but the, we pick uh, Jalan Tiga Gospel Hall because I'm from a Gospel Hall background. But it was very difficult for my wife because uh, she's, she doesn't know uh, Cantonese. She's from Sarawak. She's a Puchau speaking, uh, speak Mandarin. She, of course, she's very good with English, 
So she had a difficult time to adapt, but she's now the deacon of the church. She's, uh, you know, she's a church leader on her own own rights. Uh, she's half a pastor actually. Uh, well, uh, my my role in the church is to set direction and uh, for the church lah. But so, we are very small church. We are not like Texas Church or your church. Well, Professor, now we come to the interesting your opinion because you are you serve in the community. You're a teacher. You're an educator. You're a professor. You also serve in the international scene, and then you are also an elder and you're also chairman of a, of a Bible seminary. Um, without it being judgmental, that means it's not you trying to judge. Huh? I just want you to give a grade uh, to the church in Malaysia. Okay, when I say church in Malaysia, it doesn't mean the building church. It means the people in Malaysia who call themselves Christian. Okay? In the area of their love, sacrifice, and community. Uh, where would you grade us? Uh, a, B, C, D is poor failure, uh, slight failure. E is a failure. F is bad failure. Frankly, do you think we deserve an A or a B? Well, I do I mean, not... what do our community, our Buddhist, Taoist, Muslim friends look at us and see in us? Do they see Christ in us? <laughs> in you, I, I can see, but in most of us. Without well, being judgmental, I... where do you think we are? We can do better or not? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the church in Malaysia has got a lot of things to improve on. And, uh, you know, I, one of the things that I was, you were asking me about the books, some of the books that I wrote uh, were actually trying to address certain things that, uh, that you see, I, I look at the Chinese church. Uh, the, the problem with the Chinese church is that there is there was a, a big influence by the by watchman Nee's teaching, I put it that way. The rather dualistic sort of teaching to, 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 to divide the spiritual world, which is higher than the and the uh, the the you know the 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 the, the, the body and the souls, that sort of teaching that make the church withdraw from the Chinese society or from the society at large. Uh, so, so that produced a really unhealthy sort of a, a Christian mindset. So I wrote many years ago, I wrote a book. Uh, I, book I wrote a number of books to try to overcome this. And, and I think this is an important aspect of the Christian life uh, that we must... Uh, look at, uh, view our, our life in a more holistic way that uh, uh, God put us on, on the earth. Uh, it's not just the spiritual and the body because the body can affect the spiritual and, uh, and uh, you know, and also uh, uh, I've seen a lot of great men of God, but they are, you know, they, they, they have subconscious things that influence them just like anybody else, you know. And they, they you know, the, the charisma that they have, the, because they're so charismatic, uh, uh, I'm talking about their personal influence that sometimes it spoils them. You know, it, it, it sort of uh, uh, affected uh, them and uh, affected their decision making and so on. So the, the this dualistic mindset of uh, body and 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 the uh, and the spirit one being higher than the other to me is a wrong thing. And then we we must uh, overcome this. And and in fact, uh, I think uh, one of my key thing that I'm trying to do is to integrate faith into a, in, in, in our life. Uh, and in fact, one of the, uh, I, I wrote a book on the meaning of, of uh, righteousness because I think righteousness is a key word in the Bible. And yet 
uh, we uh, I don't think we understand what it means in a, in a practical way. You know, in a practical way, what the Bible teaches about 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 justice and righteous. What does it actually mean? Uh, so I wrote it in Chinese, and the and because I think we talk about love. Yeah. Uh, we will preach 100 sermon about love and we would not preach one sermon on on the on righteousness uh, which i think is important uh, to understand what the bible means about this i hope with all these things uh, it can make an impact uh, to 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 the church uh, as far as the bible seminary is concerned i'm a, i'm in a board and the and I don't usually interfere with the academic matters, but I was hoping that the seminary that I'm chair can be more uh, talk more about this sort of uh, yeah uh, fully uh, fully agree yeah uh, maybe you can push through an issue mm, push through that uh, love servanthood and sacrifice are the key. <laughs> I I actually got your answer, and the answer is in the scripture. All have sinned and failed and fall short of the glory of God. So actually, the church, which means the body of Christ, not just in Malaysia, the whole world, I think we get an F. But we only pass because by the grace of our God, our love of God. And I think this is the thing that that's why our salvation, we must regard it with kind of trembling. No? It's so precious and actually we don't deserve it but by the grace of God. Uh, I think we can do better, isn't it? Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, they are. Our brother Edmund is feeding 3,000 families in, uh, in Penang and our sister Cindy, single mother, is feeding people in the streets. And uh, we've got Enoch Kim, he's teaching the Afghans. Uh, they've got, there are thousands of Afghanistan here, maybe more will be coming. You know, that kind of work. Uh, but you are definitely a beacon in that. Uh, and I hope you will write your autobiography and we would love to read it. Now. Before we close, and we've got still 10 minutes, I want to, you to think about the next generation, what we can do for the next generation uh, of youngsters, you know, in, in, in a general way, not necessarily be Christian. But what can we do? Yesterday, I heard on one show about our education system, how, how the shortcomings are you know, uh, on one of the shows, you are a professor, you can influence. What can we do for the next generation? They, they, they seem to have lost hope. Suicide rate is going up. They, they, they don't have that resilience. They think tomorrow is hopeless, although they are 17, which we cannot understand. But people like us, some touching 80, still think life is precious. They're not ready to go. But these 16, 17, they have lost hope. Well, uh. You know, the, this is uh, your, the most people who listen uh, to your uh, 60 minutes are, are Christians. I would like to tell, just like I tell my children, don't do things just because of money. Uh, you know, do something that is important, really important, and that is of service to others. Uh, and make full use of the gifts and the time that God gives you. And uh, live a life so that you, we can, you know, we can be able to say like what revelation say, they will rest uh, from their labor and their deeds will follow them. I think this will be, you know, the sort of things I would, tell my young uh, uh, you know uh, my young people that live a life and choose things that are of eternal values put your money in the treasures in heaven that's what you yes mean. yes yeah. yes can you before we sign off can you want to share your high moments and your low moments and any special verse that carried you through no uh, when was that high moment I mean I, I, I don't know. For some people, it's when they first saw their first, they became a father. When was your high moment? Of course, you said Irene, marrying Irene. Was, uh, that's, <laughs> huh? Don't worry, Irene, you are the highest moment, but we want to hear other academic or job higher moments. 
yeah of course uh, you know to to all these things uh, to, uh, you know uh to 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 pass the mrcp <laughs> it's a very it's a it would be one of the high moments in life Fantastic. you know have, have you ever failed uh, professor just to encourage those who have failed <laughs> have you ever failed in any test uh? Oh yeah, sure. My high school in 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 high school, some of the times were you know, but I learned from it, la. I learned from oh, it. So, there's so, hope. so there's after hope. that, I get focused in life, la. You know, at one stage, I was uh, involved with so many things. I was a Boy Scout troop leader. I was involved in active in church in 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 uh, you know in the schools the bible society i was a leader in all these things uh, and then my school works wasn't doing well but i learned from it that one need to be focused la. so there are many uh, what you mentioned there are many high and many low i was uh, i was actually warded for 3 months when i was a fourth year student we didn't know and that. in uh, in warded in in a countryside <laughs> hospital because I had TB of the lung and yeah. and they were very strict and that was uh, so you know I thought it was very likely they would they would drop me out from the school you know and and but I went to see the dean after that and the dean look at my results and say okay you can try and uh, try to join the, the class uh, for, for after three months missing school, which is quite quite unusual. So I managed to pass uh, the end of the year. And I suppose the other low moments in my life would be, you know, when my father passed away uh, when I was 13 years old. That will be a, another low moment of my life. Although emotionally, I didn't feel uh, uh, to be disturbed too much, but my structure of the life, uh, structure of the family changed. My one brother older than me by two years, uh, he, he dropped out from school at uh, junior with a tree to join business. Uh, so the structure of the, of the life and the family changed. But I believe this is... Uh, you know, uh, that God have given me peace all in all these difficulties. La. Peace beyond understanding mm. and uh, because we live by faith mm. and that is what faith means. La. That, mm. that is my understanding mm. of faith. Uh. I want to touch on your alma mater because, you know, uh, I've got friends who are from Chongling and they think it's the best school in the whole world and they're probably right. Can you say something about Chongling? What does it make it different from preschool or what is so special about Chongling? Well, uh, Chongling, actually the famous uh, uh, schoolmaster was David Chan. David Chan was a Christian from Anglican Church. And he introduced uh, the bilingual system into Chongling. Uh. That means the emphasis is both on, on, on English as well, on Chinese as well as English. So he has built it to be a great school. And that in my class, one third of the students were in fact from the region, from uh, from from. Thailand, from Indonesia, and so on. You can't find this to, difficult to find this today, la, you know. And it is a, by the time I joined, it's actually a very competitive school. Uh, that was, uh, you know, and, and it is a great school in a sense that it produces the students. Uh, you know, at one stage, half the engineering students in UM were from Chongling. Amazing. <laughs> you so, know, and your alumni is held all over the world. No? That's so yes, amazing. Yes, I yes. don't see any school. Your yes. alumni is in Taiwan, and you get in Cambridge and Australia. Amazing. Mm. And the, the, you know, I, I told the University of Malaya, I say, you know, the love for the school is something that the local university must, the public university must learn. You know, the, 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 the Chinese school, they love the school, they give to the school, and uh, they, you know, this is something that the, the 
the the public university so learn to nurture you know that this uh, this uh, you know this this fellowship that they continue to to have uh, you know uh, for the school and because of the bond in the school can we switch the word to put church also huh? the church <laughs> okay before we close uh, i want to invite datin irene to come and be beside your husband because we're going to pray for two of you yeah datin you, you please come to downstairs or i do not know whether it's upstairs or downstairs Come, come and be beside you. Okay. We want to see the pillar. <laughs> yeah. One day we'll get you to be on the show and to sing. Yeah. So we want to pray for this wonderful couple. You know, the impact they have on the nation. You know, we, we cannot measure it. You know, we, we just can't measure it. And we want to pray that they will do more and more and more for the kingdom of God and also for the nation. I, I want to remind all of us, we must love Malaysia, our nation, our land from where we receive everything. We must love our neighbors who are beside us, whatever their race, whatever their religion, it's our duty to love them. And I think in the life of Professor Tan and Latin, they have done that in their community work. In the, It's also good to love your own race and build up the race. That's called ethnocentric. Nothing wrong for the Malay to love the Malays, the Chinese to love the Chinese, the Indian to love the Indian, but you've got to love everybody else. Yeah, That is the key, especially our message, our gospel is on love. So let's pray for this couple. Stretch out hands against them. Wonderful. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful couple Lord, that you have blessed this nation with. Lord. Uh, Datin, I said Datin's name first, but it must be the Holy Spirit. Datin Irene Yek and Tan Chong Tin, humble servants of the Lord who have walked on this earth, served 40 years of their life, given so much to the community, to the education, to the region. Lord, bless them with long life and may their wisdom continue to radiate to the community and to the nation and beyond. Bless them and bless their children and their grandchildren and their grandchildren's children. We pray that you grant them good health, grant them strength and vitality, grant them peace that comes from you all the days of their life. And also to their extended family, the siblings who are here and their extended family, bless them Lord. Bless the Tan family, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And thank you very much uh, for the 60 minutes. Uh, you know, uh, we thank God for everything. And I, we believe God is good. And thank you for coming. See you next week. Next week, we have Raymond Mui, uh, who has built the school and many things about him that I think you, we do not know until we hear from him next week. God bless and see you all again. There is no time for fellowship here. I'm sorry I have to end the meeting as promised. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. And we pray that Malaysia will wake up to a good government, a government appointed by God. I heard it from Tan Simuidin. He said, may God appoint a government. It's so wonderful. And he said, thank you. And in the last one minute, I saw a wonderful man who actually comes from my school, my father's student. So God bless you all. And we pray for Afghanistan, pray for the world, yes. pray for the community, and feed the poor. God bless you. Yep, God bless. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tan. Thank you, Dr. Sung, sir.